more about the beliefs and the behaviors. We'll spend some time talking about behaviors in, in just a bit. So let me go ahead and erase that and we'll talk about beliefs. So first of all, let's talk about a habit. What exactly is a habit? People describe habits by being positive or negative, right? I've heard people talk about biting nails is a bad habit or smoking is a bad habit or have a good habit of saving money. So what exactly is a habit? And I'm not talking about the outfit either, all right? What exactly is a habit? I know I'm corny. So a habit um, is a pattern of learned behavior that has become automatic. It is a learned pattern of behavior It is a pattern of learned behavior that has become automatic. It is a pattern of learned behavior that has become automatic. Now, the thing that I like about this particular definition is that it concentrates or the, it pivots. It, the, the central point of this particular definition is the fact that my behaviors are in fact learned. As an educator, as a, um, a motivator of people, as a, a coach and teacher, why is it so important and why am I so excited about this particular definition of habit? Because at the core of it is the fact that my habits are learned behaviors. Now, there are uh, groups of scientists that talk about how um, Certain behaviors are encoded in our DNA. I have to say, whether that's proven or not proven, I choose not to believe that. I can't believe that. Because what that says to me is that if my habits, if my behaviors are encoded in my DNA, in my genes, in the core central part of myself that I cannot change, then I will not be able to change things that I do not like. I can't change things that, that, don't, that don't help me get to my goal. The biological behavior theories say to me that I'm stuck where I am. I can't accept that. I have to believe that there are goals that I want to reach that are beyond what my parents did or beyond what my family group did or, or beyond where I grew up that I can achieve that I can work towards given the hard effort and work that it takes to get there. That I'm not limited by just the, the blood cells and the, 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 um, the DNA that I was given that I had no choice in. That I'm not limited by that. That I can go above and beyond what that is. Or I can choose to be content with where I am. But it's a choice that I get to make. That I get to make. Not something that is predisposed because of my genes. My genetic makeup. All right. So habits are important because they are patterns of learned behaviors. Um, I know plenty of smokers, and I don't know of one smoker who came out of his mother's womb with a cigarette hanging out of his mouth. How did smokers become smokers? They became smokers by learning the patterns of behaviors that smokers have. All right? Habits. Habits. So how do we build or create habits? I'm, I'm sure that lots of folks uh, have done this thing called a New Year's resolution. Right? A New Year's resolution. And typically, how long do New Year's resolutions last? Yeah, about two weeks. Right? I think my longest one was a month. Um, but why don't they, why don't they last? 
because we haven't changed some things about ourselves. So we haven't changed our, our core habits. So I want to tell you a story. At my house, we had this thing called 7 at 7. And when I was 7 years old, um, at 7 o'clock, the, the four of us or three of us at the time would line up for our um, daily check-in or nightly check-in. And so 7 at 7 meant that my mother lined us up so she could uh, make sure that we had brushed our teeth, washed our face, washed behind our ears, and my mother would give us a treat of a big spoon of cod liver oil. Yeah. Seven at seven. Night after night. Night after night. Night after night. Night after night. Fast forward 30 years. Before I go to bed, what do I do? I brush my teeth. I wash my face. I wash behind my ears. And I do not drink a spoonful of cod liver oil. I take caplets. Okay, all right. Why do I currently do that? Because it has become a habit. Why is it a habit? Because first, it was a routine. And what is a routine? A routine is a cognitive scheduled pattern of behavior. Now why did I toss in that cognitive piece in this definition of routine? that a routine is a cognitive scheduled pattern of behavior. All right. So there, there are two types of, um, we'll talk a lot about human behavior, but there are basically um, two ways that you can, two ways in which your brain kind of functions around behaviors, right? There are the cognitive behaviors and they are the associative behaviors. All right. The cognitive, and here's an example of cognitive versus associative behaviors, right? So you're driving down the street, you've got the whole soccer team in the car, you're driving down the street, a storm rolls in, and it's pouring down rain. What's the first thing you tell the soccer team to do? Be quiet. That's what you tell them to do. And what else happens in the car? What do you do? with other things in the car. You turn the radio down, right? You turn the wipers on. You tell the soccer team to be quiet. Why? Because you need to concentrate and focus on driving. So you're still driving and the, the storm lets up. You turn off the wipers. What's the first thing you do? You turn up the radio and you tell the soccer team to continue or the soccer team knows to continue. Why? Because you've just moved from your cognitive thinking about your behaviors to your associative, which is about habits. Now, the funny thing about your associative, your habits, I don't know if it's happened to you, but it's happened to me, that sometimes when I get home, I forgot what happened on the drive home. Have you ever gotten home and, and you, you, you're like, wow, I don't even remember the drive because it's become a part of your habits, your associative behaviors. So what will help us establish good habits? Having good cognitive scheduled patterns of behaviors, routines. Good routines create good habits. Good routines make good habits, all right? So if you want a good routine, you must have you must have good habits. Because after a routine is established, it moves from cognitive to associative, which are your habits. All right? So let's move on down and talk about a little bit about attitude. Attitude. Now, I don't know about you, but I've been told from time to time that I have had a bad attitude. And I don't know if you've been around teenagers, but they seem to have a lot of that, a lot of attitude, right? So what exactly is an attitude? 
Now, it's really funny because I remember my parents would say to me, Andre, go to your room until you learn how to act. And I'd be in my room and I'd, you know, be hanging out in there. And then I think I have my act together and I'd step out into the hallway and I'd say, to be or not to be. Yeah, I spent a lot of time around a room because that's not what they were talking about. But I was very upset because who do they think they are? Sisker and Roper or Ebert or, you know, movie critics? Um, but that's not what they were talking about. Typically, when we talk about attitudes, we talk about attitudes in such um, amorphous kind of in enigmatic ways that nobody really knows what you're talking about. Because my parents would also say, after they've punished me, boy, fix your attitude. Fix your face. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm crying or mad or upset. And I'm fixing my face so I can change my attitude. Right? Typically, we talk about attitude as some kind of emotional response to something. And what I'd like to do is give you a new paradigm, a new way of thinking about attitudes. That when I found that, this new way of thinking about attitudes, it really changed or shifted the focus of how I deal with other folks and how I deal with myself. All right? So, an attitude. One of the things that I realized when I was 13, I went to, uh, to New York for the first time. And on the way to New York, we're flying um, into New York, and the, the captain, the pilot, gets on the, uh, the loudspeaker and says, if you look out your left side window, you'll see uh, the Statue of Liberty. So I looked out the window, I didn't see a Statue of Liberty. Bad attitude. So I figure, wh whatever, I'll, I'll just catch it on the way back. And on the way back, the pilot says, if you look out the right side window, you'll see the Statue of Liberty. And I'm sitting there, and I look out the window, and I can't see the Statue of Liberty because it's on the other side of the plane. I have a bad attitude. All right? So I'm going to tell you what an attitude is. So in, in aeronautics, there are some, this is an airplane, by the way. There are some things that pilots should be concerned with. One is knowing how far they are from the ground, which is called what? The altitude. The altitude. How far the pilot is from the ground is referred to as the altitude. There's also another concept that pilots are concerned with, which is called the attitude. And the attitude is the direction to which a plane pivots. That is the attitude. Attitude. When we talk about Attitudes. Attitudes are determined by the way in which we pivot. Now I'll give you an example. So uh, my father was my pastor, right? And I love my father. My father loved me. And so um, it's Friday night. I want to hang out with my friends. Um, I ask my father. I say, Dad, you know, can I take the car? And my dad says, Yes. And I say my father has what kind of an attitude? A good attitude. And my father says, I have what kind of an attitude? He says that I also have a good attitude. So we both have good attitudes. Sunday, now let me tell you a little bit about our church. We went to church because we opened the church, so we were there from like 7.30 a.m. to about 10.30 p.m. and we'd stop for chicken at about noon okay but we were at church all day and so i asked my father i said dad um a bunch of us want to go to the movies can i borrow the car and what does my father say to my request he says no so i say my father has what kind of an attitude a bad attitude 
Consequently, he says that I have what kind of an attitude? A bad attitude. Why? Because I didn't get what I wanted. All right? So first of all, an attitude has two parts. An attitude is the direction you lean According to your goal. When I lean towards my goal, when I'm getting what I want, I have a good attitude. When I'm leaning away from my goal, I have a bad attitude. So at the core of an attitude, what determines if an attitude is good or bad? Okay, before you answer that, uh, I'll give you a couple more examples. I've known people at work who had bad attitudes about work. Why did they have bad attitudes about work? Because work was keeping them from doing something that they wanted to do. Oh, I could be kicking it, or I'm missing my soap opera, or you know, I could be on vacation in Europe. All of these things, they're upset because they are not reaching their... What my parents didn't understand, or maybe they understood but couldn't relate it to me very well, is when they were telling me to change my attitude, what they were actually telling me or requesting of me, or in some cases demanding of me, was that I change my goal. Have you ever had a job that you that was a weakness for you, <laughs> that you just couldn't quit? I mean, you really just can't go anywhere. What happens to your attitude? It typically goes down. You have a bad attitude when you're in that situation. I recall being in a situation very similar to that where I had a job that I couldn't quit. But I had to change my goal because my goal was impacting my attitude which was impacting my habits and my behaviors and my efficacy and my beliefs. So I had to change my goal. So I, st I switched in my mind from saying that I'm going to this job because I like it to saying that I'm going to this job because it makes sure that I have a place to eat. It makes sure that I have a, 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 a place to dwell, a nice car to drive, that, that I can look halfway decent. So this is why I'm going to my job, not because I like it. I had to change my goal, which impacted my ability to change my attitude. So an attitude is the direction that you lean according to your goal. So if you have a bad attitude, then you might want to check out what your goal is. Typically with young people, they have bad attitudes because they're not getting, they're not reaching their goals. They're not getting what they want. So I, on several occasions, have had to check myself and check in and see what is it that I want? What is my goal? And then that helps me to change my attitude. All right? So let's move on to uh, this concept of belief. And then finally, we'll hit efficacy. So what is a belief? What is a belief? Well, I'll tell you. Thought, 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 belief. Belief. So what is a belief? A belief is a system of thoughts. It is a system of thoughts that you agree with. Alright. 
And so let's look at a, a thought. What is a thought? A thought is that, that conversation that you have with yourself, that mental conversation that you have with yourself, that if you let them stack up enough, will become a belief. Here's an example. Um, in, the, um, in the Muslim faith, there are five beliefs that make up the foundation of that religious tradition. Five beliefs. They're called the five pillars of Islam. Right? Uh, for Judaic Christian religions, there are ten thoughts that make up the foundation of, of those religions. And that is called the what? Those ten thoughts are called the ten commandments. They make up the foundation of an entire belief. And there are millions of people who, who hold those two beliefs. Right? Those two beliefs. So a system of thoughts that you agree to is a belief. Now, the funny thing is, the two parts is, the first is about the thoughts, and the second is that you agree with. Right? I, I recall a time when my mother, um, apparently, my mother's a smart aleck, much like myself, and um, I... I recall that she was on the playground doing her recess duty and uh, she saw two kids fighting and one of the kids she said why are you fighting and one of the kids said he called my mom on a name and my mother said well, what was the name and the boy told my mom the name and then my mom said well is it true and the boy said yes and so my mother said then why are you fighting beliefs are thoughts that you agree with I know that you've heard uh, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Lie. Words always hurt more than sticks and stones. Um, when you agree with someone, you give, you give that power. You give it credence. You give it the ability to um, take over your life in a sense. When we agree with things, we give it sanction in our own lives. We say it's okay for you to be acceptable into my life. All right? Now, the, the funny thing about that, that agreement is that, that this, pot, this process of belief allows that agreement to become more solid because the more I agree with something, the more solid it becomes as a part of my foundation of my belief, which then starts to impact this whole system. All right? So we have to be careful who we agree to and with, what we allow into our lives, what words we allow to have power in our lives. That's extremely important that we be in control of our beliefs. Oftentimes we don't take control of what people say. We allow people to say things around us that either contradict our beliefs or aren't sustaining for the kind of person we want to be. And so We'll talk more about this later, but you don't have to cut folks off, but you do have to make a stand for what you believe, all right? And lastly, we're going to talk about self-efficacy. And efficacy is the power the belief and the power you have, all right? And when we talk about power, what is the definition of power? Power is the ability to do work. So efficacy is the power you have, and power is the ability to do work. So efficacy is the, pow is the ability to do work that you have. Everybody can do something. Martin Luther King said it best. Everyone can be great because everyone can serve. Now, we all might be, not be able to do the same things, but we can all do something. There is a, a sense of purpose. There's a sense of power. There is a sense of reason and rightness as to why we're on this planet. We're all here to do something impactful and powerful. And we'll talk about efficacy in just a little while. Thank you so much.